you will uh, be informed how you can get your project funded, which is very interesting. Uh, please welcome him to the stage, Simone Matis Pappenhalter. I'll do it with the microphone. Oh, well, thanks very much for inviting me. Uh, the fact that I'm here is already proof that the crowd has got some power because I don't have, personally don't have anything to do with IoT as such, but I work here in the co-working space. So the IoT guys in Vienna are here regularly and we got talking and so this whole thing came about. Um, when I was invited, Harvard asked me not just to talk about crowdfunding, but also like as sort of a business talk for your for your meetup, but also tell our startup story um, because we make it the crowdfunding platform I represent has launched in Austria yesterday. Um, so if I look tired, that is because I am. Um, <laughs> please bear with me. And, um, so I myself represent the startup, even though the company has been running in Switzerland for some time, but I will tell you about that shortly. So um, this is not one of my standard talks. What I'm trying to do is tell our story and tell you about how crowdfunding works all at the same time. I hope that will work out. Before I start, has any one of you already uh, founded a crowdfunding campaign? Hands up. One. Which campaign? Um, I don't think uh, it was a like, traditional crowdfunding campaign, but it was uh, basically the, the Yola phone, which was... Uh, well, I think it actually was on a crowdfunding platform, wasn't it? I'm not sure. It was maybe a pretty hard, but uh, yeah, things are... Well, yeah, it, it can be a pre-order, but anyway, so it was the only one ever. Oh, there's one. What did you find? I found a, a special kind of pillow on Kickstarter. A, a pillow? <laughs> okay. Uh, and I think that uh, news was... Okay, okay, we've got, we've got three examples. Um, as you haven't found it, probably the next question will only raise silence. Has anybody, any one of you ever done the crowdfunding project themselves? Anybody ever thought about getting the money for whatever you do through the crowd? Or even toyed with the idea? Well, two. Okay, maybe. Maybe there are going to be a few more after that. And um, so, what is the common denominator um, from our startup story and crowdfunding? And the common denominator is the crowd. Whatever you're doing, if you want money or customers, whatever, it's, it's a crowd, you know? And the crowd we want is people who do crowdfunding campaigns, ideally on our platform, because our business model is that we take a provision from all the campaigns that run successfully. So it's an all or nothing model. If they don't reach the target sum, they don't get the money, and we don't get any money. And if you do reach the target sum, we take a share of that. So we want a crowd of, of crowdfunders, and you want a crowd, if you do a campaign, of people who give you money, if you don't do a campaign, you basically want customers or financers or partners. The moment you actually want to go public in whatever shape or form, you do need a crowd. So I will introduce, we make it shortly, and then talk about the crowd bit. Uh, we make it. Uh, we do reward-based crowdfunding, um, so no investing. I will tell you shortly what exactly this means. We are the market leaders in Switzerland, so Make It has been founded three years ago in Switzerland. It's the largest platform there, and we're the second largest platform in Europe, which is in German, but the platform also runs in English and French. Uh, we're active in Germany as well, and we have launched in Austria yesterday with 15 projects. And uh, we make it as a whole has already raised 7 million in, in three years. You know, in successful projects. There were about a hundred a thousand projects were successful, um, and that was a success rate of 70%, which is the highest, I can tell you, of all the re <coughs> sorry, of all the reward-based uh, crowdfunding platforms. So reward-based crowdfunding. I'll explain this shortly because uh, from my experience, you know, crowdfunding is a buzzword, there is a lot of talk about it, but people keep mixing up the different models of crowdfunding. 
For example, all of you Austrians, you know the whole discussion around Heinrich Daudinger and Waldviertler, if you heard about that, that concerns crowd investing or crowd lending, where the crowd either gets shares in the company with crowd investing, or um, when they to get shares, sort of their reward is to get um, parts of the winnings if the startup is successful, and with crowd lending, the reward for the people who finance it are interests. So these are economical uh, models in the strictest sense, and they're legally still difficult in, in Austria. There are already a few platforms who do that. There is Conda and Green Rocket and a thousand, uh, thousand, five thousand, I don't know how to say this in English. Anyway, there are a few crowd investing platforms in Austria already, but there is hardly no uh, platform that does reward-based crowdfunding, which is what we do, uh, and which is what you probably know from Kickstarter or Startnext or Indiegogo. So the basics are, there is a project, um, there is a target sum, this is an example from Switzerland, that's why it is in Swiss francs. Um, there is a fixed amount of time this target sum has to be reached, usually with us it's 30 or 45 days. So if you collect enough money to reach a target sum after that um, time span, you get the money, minus our provision. Um, if you don't manage it, the money goes back to the, to the funders. And the, the point of reward is that for crowdfunding there are rewards. So everybody who supports your project will get something. Um, if the project is about a product or a service, usually that's included in the rewards where you actually have this pre-sale model you talked about. So if it is about that phone, you would give them the money on the crowdfunding campaign and then you would get the phone. But usually the rewards are scaled depending on how much people give and there can also be like fun rewards or personal things like workshops or whatever. So you can basically do anything with that. It can be a straight, a straight pre-sale or if there is no product or service to pre-sale, it can be a whole lot of different things. And so, at the core of it is the question of the crowd. Who is your crowd? So I'm trying to switch now between sort of telling you what you would have to do or think about if you do a crowdfunding campaign, campaign and what we did to um, get this launch in Austria uh, on the ground. So, if you do a crowdfunding campaign, the crowd, well, it's a subtle hint in the term, <laughs> this is quite important. And it really is, is worth the time of thinking about who your crowd actually is, or who the crowds are, because there's usually there are different ones. So if you do an IoT project, if it is sort of a product-based thing, your crowd will be the customers, but also your crowd will be the whole IoT community. It can be your, you know, the famous family, fools and friends. It really makes sense to think about that. Who are your crowds? And also, um, not just sort of to name them, but to think about the relationship they have to you. Because your customers will have a different interest in your project than, for example, your IoT colleagues here and your family. They have different motivations to support you. Um, and keep that in mind when you're doing your when you're doing your campaign. So um, you've got the project. You think about your crowd, and you have to react to that. Otherwise, it makes no sense in the way you present yourself and in the way you um, and what kind of rewards you offer. I will have another um, sheet about that. And then it is, at the end, it's all about communication. And I stress this because this is what most people underestimate with crowdfunding. A crowdfunding campaign is a communication campaign. And um, I know that this is, you know, it's sort of a switch in mindset. Because if you're starting something, if you're working on something, and it doesn't matter whether it is tech or whether you're an artist or whatever, you're, you know, most people are so engrossed in what they do that they find it difficult to sort of step outside of that and think about you know, the crowd and communicating with them. And many people find that difficult. And I can tell you it is not the techie thing. Everybody finds it, most people find, find it difficult. But it is worth it because it's your network and your network is a resource and it's the most valuable resource you can have. So, um, when I'm talking about presentation, I mean basically the presentation of the crowdfunding platform. That's how it looks on our platform, but it's the basic thing if you go on Kickstarter or wherever, you've got video, you've got a very short description. You should be able to put it into two sentences what you're doing. Um, 
and then a bit of a longer description and it makes sense to think of the people you know you're trying to reach in the language you speak and I'm not saying whether it is English or German but also the kind of words you use because if you use your tech speak but you actually want to aim this at customers who are not techies themselves they just won't feel addressed I mean sort of the metaphorical language you speak that's why it is important to think um, about the actual kinds of crowds you want to reach and if you want to reach both well you have to do both I mean the sort of the techie community and the, the user customers like me who don't understand it so presentation tailor it to your crowd think about the language what they speak think about what interests them present it in a way that you actually can draw the people um, and what emotions that may sound a bit cheesy but what emotions drive them to support you it can be just because they want whatever you're doing it can be because they think themselves as part of a community like you are and it's sort of a community sense and these are different motivations so also probably they will want a different kind of reward or a different kind of reward will be interesting for them and your family might for example support you no matter what you do just because it is you you know and um, they would have a, they have a different motivation as well and also get to the point so make it short the rewards i already said most of what is on that um, on here the rewards should be attractive it's a big motivation to, uh, for people to support a crowdfunding campaign also when you look at other campaigns you know i usually have a, a very um, clear idea of how much money I would give somebody, so they would give them a 20, give them 20. But if they have an attractive reward for 30 or 50, I can I easily up my sort of up my uh, uh, my support because I just want whatever they're promising me there. And um, so target specific crowds with specific rewards, scale them. Um, if you have a service or a product to sell, well, make it a pre-sale campaign, so you just get the money in advance. And make it personal, if possible. Crowdfunding is not like a normal customer thing, it's more people are investing in, you know, in a part of a process. They're not just consumers, they're more participants. And so uh, it's of a different kind of, uh, different kind of thing, it's more personal. And also they're giving the money directly to you, they're not buying something in a shop or going to an anonymous event, you know, you're, you're behind this. Um, well, will we make it? Who is do we make it? Crowd or also, who, um, for, what kind of people is reward-based crowdfunding for? Obviously people who need money. Um, but reward-based crowdfunding doesn't work for, or usually doesn't work for everything. It works best if there is a product um, which isn't, you know, doesn't cost 10,000 euros just for one, because it is usually B2C. B2B so far doesn't work with reward-based crowdfunding. That is really an investing thing. So you probably won't get um, companies to buy into your campaign. So it works good for products, for customers, for services, and for all the, all the projects that have a good story, if there is a social benefit, you know, if you have a good person story that drives you, that is what gets, what gets people hooked. Um, and the We Make It crowd, we, um, we do a broad range of, of different, uh, so we are active in different areas. Um, and what, you know, there, is, there are these big players like Kickstarter or Indiegogo, and people who come to us, they're interested in more sort of personal service because we help you do your campaign, so we give you advice, we talk to us. Um, most problem, um, um, projects are actually regional, so that's what we, have, uh, what we have there. And so our crowd is people who plan a crowdfunding campaign, or also people, maybe like you, who um, are not planning a campaign, but might discover that it could be interesting if they learned about it. So, that's where the communication comes in. If you have a project, you've got the presentation, you know what it's about, you've got the target sum, we have got our platform, we want to get it on the ground in Austria, it's about building your crowd. And I can just say from personal experience, you know, talking to people personally is just the best thing you can do no matter what you want. Um, work with multipliers to reach specific communities. You know, if you have a crowdfunding campaign on an IoT, subject, talk to the IoT guys, they reach a large network. 
sort of involve other people. Um, what we do is that, like this, we talk a lot about crowdfunding because it's still something that many people talk about, but not that many people know actually, you know, what it entails. Um, service, well, I already mentioned that, we help people with their campaigns. Um, building a core community helps, for example, we've got a secret group on Facebook where everybody who does crowdfunding with us can sort of talk about it and share their experiences and ask questions and it's not public. And sort of because they feel they're part of a community, they're really, they, you know, they, they are the best, best marketing really for what we do. Um, we're working with influencers, so if you want to get something done, talk to the kind of people who have a power in that field. That that can be because they reach many people, it can just be because it's the kind of people that have got a lot of credibility and if they say that is cool, many people will believe that. Um, and um, while well, we're establishing a local and regional communication, uh, so establishing communication is vital. If you're planning a crowdfunding campaign, you need to reach people. So you need social media reach, actually email addresses are still the most effective. Um, of what it is out there. So we see from our Google Analytics statistics that we've got the best reach through Facebook, but most of the conversions where people actually you know, support the campaign come from um, emails and direct links because you can address people personally. So have a mailing list for people who are interested in what you do if you want to reach a public. So, and preparation is key. Um, I, I talk to many people who sort of think, okay, I, I do a crowdfunding campaign, you know, I do this, I put it online, and then the crowd magically will appear and this will be financed. Unfortunately, this is not true. It is hard work and you have to um, get at least 30% of the target sum, this is our experience, from within your own network, if not even more. That depends on what you do and it depends whether a sort of snowball effect kicks in, you know, if everybody you know talks about a few more people they know, you can potentially reach many, many people, but that doesn't work with every project. And unfortunately, it is no science, so um, you can sort of give advice on how you manage that, but um, you can never be really sure. But preparation is really important for communication. So map your communication channels. Who do you reach how? You know, emails, Social media, phone numbers, shop windows, IoT meetups, you know, it's all communication. If it is a larger campaign, do a pre-campaign so that you don't start communicating on the day the campaign goes online, but sort of start before that so that when you start it, you've already got the attention and you can sort of kick off on a, on a higher <coughs> level. Um, I already said that activate and involve other people and other communities, opinion leaders or media Make it easy for people to spread the word of your campaign, to shareables, you know, pre-write emails people can forward, you know, if you want people to talk about what you do, um, it shouldn't be hard for them. And contact people personally whenever possible, it's still the most effective thing. And work from the inside out. So like, crowdfunding is sort of you start with your own close network and it sort of spreads outwards like you're throwing a pebble into the water and you can't work from the outside in. So media work, press work, will never get a campaign done just because even if you're in the big media, it won't make your campaign if you can't push it sort of from your own network. And plan your content and storytelling. But this is when you recorded marketing really. Um, if you have a 30-day campaign and um, well, you're telling everybody you know on day one that you're starting, what are you going to tell them in the last 29 days? When you won't, you won't mail them every day that you have this campaign going. So you really want to keep the attention up and you need stories to tell. Um, and so, just to, to make it short, because I'm already running out of time, I'm done anyway, um, that would just have been a wrap-up thing. Um, what we did is really we, um, I'm touring the whole of Austria, um, I'm talking to multipliers, to co-working spaces, 
academies, FHAs, you know, everywhere where there are people who do things who might be interested in crowdfunding and doing workshops. Um, and so that we're really building this from the bottom up. And I do think it is the most sustainable way um, of building whatever either initiative or business you want to put up. Because as I said, the Reddit network is your biggest resource and in case for crowdfunding, this resource can actually mean money. Um, the next two workshops I'm doing are here on the 12th of March um, and in sector 5 on March 21st. That will be in English as well. And um, if you've got, apart from the questions, you can ask me now any more questions. Uh, obviously, you can um, contact me and I'm here on the second floor. start next a big market leader. Austria hasn't had many crowdfunding projects so far so we see the chance here that we can sort of come into this at the beginning and um, so that is a very economical idea in there but also there are many scenes that are sort of buzzing and you just think you know they're just waiting to happen and many regions as well for example upper Austria also it's not just this the cities with the typical early adopters, the regions are very interesting. So we also feel that, you know, there are things, the startup scene, for example, you know, many scenes that sort of give the idea that it's a pressure cooker is building and we want to be there when it goes off. Um, thanks a lot. Um, I, I would be very interested in what you're thinking about the benefits of having a local um, or a regional um, crowdfunding platform um, compared to something very well established, for example, Kickstarter. And, I mean, we, we are a very technical crowd here, so it's, it's mostly IT projects. Um, I see that uh, a, a local platform makes a lot of sense for uh, cultural projects, you know, like music or films, or um, I've just browsed through the, through the project list. But, but I would, I would like to hear your thoughts. Do the benefits of a local platform really outweigh the, the, the global reach of the big players? It really depends on your project. If you have one of those typical gadget projects, and if you're already very professional, honestly, I'm, I'm not stupid, go to Kickstarter. They're the only platform that I actually have a community that browse on the platform. But I can tell you, the, the I have to tell you, as a platform, platforms aren't that important. People support projects and not platforms. Kickstarter is the only exception for those you know, geeky techy things. But also, Kickstarter won't be, just because you're being successful, you still have to sort of get the communication in the US going. You have to be able to ship this stuff worldwide. The Kickstarter community is accustomed to a very high standard of rewards. So if you're actually at the beginning, that is too big to handle. And in our experience, most crowdfunding campaigns are actually regional. But also, you know, even if your project has got an international possibility, do you reach the international crowd? This is about communication. Do you have communication channels outside of Austria? If you really do, then an international platform might make sense. But honestly, most people find it hard <laughs> to get the communication off the ground in the region they live and where the whole network is. So just because it's on the internet, people don't flock to it. There is a million of content out there, and sadly the world hasn't they waited for any of us. So um, obviously there are projects that make sense for them to go on Kickstarter, but for most of them, actually the platform isn't important in terms of the crowd, but in terms of the service the platform provides. And you won't be able to talk to anybody from Kickstarter. You can't get any personal support from, from them. Okay. Uh, we 
you mentioned that this is mostly for B2C. Mm -hmm. When we think about B2B, what's your opinion on which, which is the way how to crowdfinance this kind of it's a campaign or how it goes? Yeah, theoretically, this would work perfectly B2B, but so far the businesses haven't gotten into it. Crowdfunding is still relatively new. Um, many people, you know, are insecure because they don't know how to deal with it. And then even more pragmatically, they don't know how to tax it. You know, they give you money for reward-based crowdfunding, where in the Kostenrechnung, what is Kostenrechnung in English? You know, they, <laughs> they don't know where to put it in their books. I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but that is, these are reasons. Theoretically, this would work well. Um, investing, obviously, is much more B2B. And the way B2B can work with reward-based crowdfunding is to involve them as partners or sponsors. For example, um, somebody sponsors your reward and in turn they profit from the communication um, through your campaign. So that makes sense. Uh, I have a question. So supposing that uh, I already have the marketing campaign mm -hmm. already ready and I come to you, how much time does it take until I send a contract with you, or uh, everything is ready to be uploaded on your portal? Or the well, if you've got everything ready, this can be a matter of one or two days. Okay. I mean, if you have the video and the descriptions, and if you have a communication plan, you submit your project, we are checking whether, you know, it is not something that is illegal, or, <laughs> yeah. you know, and then, you know, you're can edit, you can fill out everything, and then you can go online. So, from uh, and we'll be very quick. For a couple of days. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is the percentage that you take? We take 10%, that is with the fees for the payment. So it is for everything. And I have said, for example, Kickstarter day, it's 6% for us, and 4% are payment fees. Because, you know, Kickstarter, they say 5%, and then somewhere in the small print, <laughs> They add the payment fees, and we just have okay. This is a whole, you know, what you're paying, and that is it. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, the the guys who, who, who crowdfund, so who, who donate, um, do they have the possibility to set limits and to say uh, the lim the minimum limit that is accepted and the maximum or stuff like this? And uh... um, you can't limit the amount of money they give you, but usually people just choose the rewards. Technically, they can give you any amount of money they want, but really, the highest percentage, just, it's almost negligible, people who do that. If you, if you have a certain kind of rewards, people will choose those rewards. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks. Uh, one more question. Yeah. And him, he tried, he tried for quite some time. <laughs> Two more questions. <laughs> uh, I've seen uh, on Kickstarter or Indiegogo, so uh, the platforms are more and more used as marketing tools more than uh, crowdfunding platforms. Um, uh, what do you think about when you create a new project, a product as an uh, already established company? Does it make sense to use a crowdfunding campaign uh, to market this product? Absolutely. It's what I said. The people who support you are not just customers. You're allowing them to become part of the process. And that does emotionally, it does something quite different. So the customer retention and community building aspect of crowdfunding is huge. And also, for a tech crowd like you are, the early adopters love to get their hands on something before everybody else, you know? It's also an image thing, oh, well, I found those guys, you know? When it wasn't even in production, there is some there, there, there is an emotional reward in that, and I hear many people do it who actually could raise the money in another way, and they do it for the promotional value and for the community building value. Uh, just a quick question: uh, How much is your, um, the the uh, the average funded project? Um, it's seven or eight thousand euros now. Our largest was ninety thousand so far. Manage that and be quick. Um, have you ever experienced that such projects uh, fail? I mean, they have the budget, but they, for example, then can't ship the product uh, as a reward for 
whatever of cases. So far once, and they paid the money back. Um, legally, it wouldn't be our issue anymore. Um, legally, it would be a thing between the people who start the project and their funders. But um, so far, we didn't have a problem. Um, but they, you know, if you promise a certain product as a reward, you're legally bound to deliver that. So if you can't, um, that is a problem. Um, I think, you know, if you communicate well, and if it really didn't work out and you pay the money back, probably nothing will happen, but people theoretically could sue you. If the product is part of the reward. Alright, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank Simone. you.